Looks like it's working. Another test, another day. In this case, we've got ultra or ultra plus ultra wide. I'm looking at my screen instead of the camera. I've had this lens for quite a while. I haven't done a ton with it. I made one video. The funny thing, the the most comments I get on that video are related to me wearing a mask outdoors. So maybe I'll pull it up real quick while we're at it. You oh no, I spelt it spelt it, spelled it right. Scott Bonsai. <laughs> Quickest way to get to where I need to go. So this is the lens. And this little preview, you could see quickly it shows me with a mask on. I guess I could run it. Problem is I don't want to run ads with uh it's always a bad idea to run your own ads. So you can see I have a mask on. The main reason I was wearing a mask, which I explained to one of the commenters, is that it was cold. And I got used to wearing masks, and it's wearing a mask is nice in the cold. Wearing two masks in the cold is nicer. But, yeah. Um... So I'm using that lens right now for the stream. The negative of it, there's well, two negatives. Let's go back to it. First negative, actually, let's, nope, not that one. So I have the Sony A6000 with kit lens. Here's the Rockstar 10 millimeter F8. So one of the negatives off the bat is it's an F8 lens, fixed aperture. It's not gonna get smaller. It's not going to get bigger. Aperture means the hole in the lens that light goes through to hit the sensor. So F8, that's slow. That means more grain, everything. But the other negative is that it is manual focus. Well, that's a mixture. That's a positive and a negative. Lenses like this that are, there's a term called pancake lens, which I guess you can probably figure out. It's very thin. It's a pancake lens by, you know, just a general term. And a lot of these lenses, I have another one that's similar to this, a little bit wider. No, wait, is it? No, it's it's more narrow. I think it's 16, maybe, f6.3, but it doesn't focus. So it's a fixed focus. This one does focus, but it is very challenging to tell what exactly is in like the the closest focus so i can adjust it and it might do something but it's really hard so this is the closest focus it's hard for me to tell on the screen really but it's 0.3 meters which I, I need to convert that to America units. Let's see real quick. Point. Like a foot and something. Yeah, it's it's nearly one foot. So that's the closest focus, which would probably be, be around here. I'm not sure. So, and then we can go all the way to infinity, which means the stuff in the background should be in focus as much as possible. And still, it's that's one of the kind of benefits of a wide, ultra wide angle lens is that the focus doesn't matter as much, but it still, in my opinion, still matters. So I don't think I would want to use it like this even though I can't really tell what, what exactly is in focus here. 
So again, at the closest focus, I think I'm I'm going to go maybe halfway, right where the 10 millimeter f8 text on the lens is, and just hope hope it's good enough for this test. I mean, usually use it like this, which looks fine. But uh, if I do this, you know, the pr you can probably tell what is more more in focus, what's not. So with the settings, f8 again is pretty small aperture, so you get more grain in the image. I'm using one thirtieth of a second, f8, ISO four thousand, and the M50 is not especially amazing at high ISOs, but. Uh, in a video situation like this, that's lower than 1080p, it's probably not a humongous problem, but, uh, you know, it's not going to look amazing type of thing. But I actually do like the look of it, minus all the junk and everything. But, uh, very interesting look. So, wah, touch the lens. My hand <laughs> looks like, uh, one piece with uh, Luffy is Gumu Gumu <laughs> no uh, what, what the fruit that he ate you know he has stretching abilities so that kind of looks like you do some cool stuff with that it's a 10 millimeter but then there's a crop which we can calculate I guess real quick um times 1.6 16 millimeter so in the land of APS-C cameras that's pretty wide but if you go to full frame cameras with larger sensor 16 millimeter is a pretty common focal length for full frame it's easier to make I'm no lens designer but it's apparently easier to make ultra wide lenses for full frame cameras instead of the APS-C smaller size micro four thirds all these are more difficult to make it seems like more difficult to make ultra wides but yeah okay enough of that maybe for a little bit we can do some video gaming Start off with the usual halo. Halo. All right. Last time it felt pretty good with halo. So that update seemed to help. I think it looks pretty good. Although I can't tell how grainy it is. It's got to be pretty grainy in the final, you know, 1080p. Let's jump right to the big team battle, see if it works. I spent way too much money on fast food today. First, to a regional place called Culver's. Usually, I'd get like a cheeseburger there, but I went with a grilled chicken sandwich. And then, instead of fries, you can get cheese curds. It ups the price quite a bit, but I did get cheese curds. They're pretty good. Culver's is, came from Wisconsin, so Wisconsin cheese curds is the thing. And uh, they brought their specialties to Illinois when they 
that need to show up. Uh, but yeah, I, I did that, and I was, of course, always try to walk and stuff, but it was 13 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. And these days, I've been buying food and then eating in my car and stuff, and it's fine. I mean, I, I have a ton of clothes on and jackets and everything else. And I usually try to walk afterwards, but this time I did not. Looks like they did, uh, no, they did not fix that flipping pop-up that constantly keeps showing up. So that didn't work. I guess we could do a, a bot thing. Try the bot one. This always seems to work. But it's not, not exactly, I'm no skilled player or anything, but bots are in here not exactly challenging. Most of the time, sometimes you get surprised by them. Uh, anyways, Culver's, and tried to walk, but flipping 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then I had went to another place. This one's very local. They have maybe one, two, three, five locations, maybe. They added one in the suburbs of Chicago not too long ago. But uh, mostly in the Rockford metro, metropolitan region. I don't know what you would actually call it, but they're called beef, beef a roo, beef a roo, but uh, you you know we pronounce it uh, beef a roo. They have cheese curds for <laughs> surprising enough. It's a limited time thing. I think they're testing the market and seeing how popular it is. So I got cheese curds there too, just to try them out. The difference is, I I think beef a roo needs to work on their preparation or something. And what oils they use, because it smelled like they definitely used the same oil. Maybe the oil was used a little too much. They had a, the smell of some of their other food, from what I remember. I'm trying to think what stuff they have that, oh, onion ring, that's what it was. It smelled like the onion rings that they also sell. So most likely... Someone before me got onion rings and they use the same oil. And I don't like onions. <laughs> I don't mind onions, but they usually dunk on me in large quantities. Not Well, moderate to large quantities. Uh, so that kind of turned me off a little bit to it. But they weren't bad. They And I think they might have needed to be cooked a, a little bit longer. Because the Usually with cheese curds, you have cheese in the inside, and then you have the shell, which is some type of breading. I'm not sure exactly how it works or what they use to cover the cheese, but it's a bread-type covering. And uh, Culver's usually cooks them a decent amount, so it's crunchy, pretty crunchy. The beef roux ones weren't nearly as crunchy. The shell casing. So I think if they were to cook them a little bit longer, that would help. Uh, the the cheese in there was kind of you know sometimes when you if you've ever had cheese curds, you chew on them they're like squeaky, which you can get with pizza and stuff too. Those the beef roux ones were pretty squeaky. So on rare, well maybe not rare occasion, but on occasion. The Culver's ones will be squeaky too. Just where you like bite on it and it squeaks. But uh, yeah, they were okay. So definitely a lot of cheese curds today. Uh, wow, I'm surprised the bot thing is also being very. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> I have so many cameras hooked up to this and to usually change change it 
Maybe I can switch this to uh, What does that look like? I screwed up here. <laughs> I have a little zip, well, not zip, but uh, hook and loop thing, and it's stopping me from going in going lower angle deep it's a little better oh, this is very much not working today I think Halo's a no-go. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. Is it still working? Yes. Maybe? Yes. HDMI in. Don't want that. All right. Goodbye, Halo. I know it's free. But uh, very inconsistent. What else do we have here? Final Doom. Let's try it. Give it a shot. So I was like, I have Steam and GOG. TNT. Single player. Audio is probably going to be super loud. Oh, I didn't change my. That reminds me. Oh, that should be okay. There we go. Slow. What's going on? Okay. Oh man, I don't know if I can play it without strafing. Is there no strafe in this? At one point, I had Doom for Super Nintendo, and it it did strafing. Of course, that probably came after this version, but who knows? And we'll sh shoot. There we go. I guess I'm supposed to just run around and punch things. I was dead already. Yeah, I'm not going to keep playing this. There we go. Okay, let's look for something else. I do have some stories about Doom. I was pretty scared of it back then. Scared to play it. Let me see if I have another. Wow, that's irritating. Come on, GOG. If that's the only Doom I've got on here. But I got it 
used to rent it on the Super Nintendo, and I had a friend that that I that he would play it, and I would generally watch, but I would occasionally try to play it when we rented it. Uh, yeah. He eventually, I don't know if I even want to say it, but. Definitely a good friend back then. You know, the, the kids around the neighborhood type of thing. But he, him specifically, he, he wasn't into gangs and stuff, but, you know, like, try to act cool and whatever else. As far as I know, by the time, uh, I don't know if I want to go into it, mm. but the gist is that he, he was shot and uh, killed in a drive-by. Not cool. By the when it happened, I I hadn't hung out with him for many years, so it didn't like hit as hard. But definitely, I still think about him. Shadowrun Hong Kong. Never even tried to play it. Hmm. Well, it's not installed. That would not be fun trying to install that. Darkstone Doom 2. Let's try Doom 2 real quick. I assume this is going to be just bad. Just as bad. Uh, number... Same type of settings. I guess I'll leave it there. Oh, what is going on? Oh, you press the right mouse button and then it strafes. I don't know how I feel about that. Ah, oh, that's weird. That is weird. Wow. It's funny how controls back then were... You know, they were experimenting and trying to understand what feels right when you're doing it. I wish I could change the control layout, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, gonna pass. Maybe there's some way to change it. I can look into for a future attempt. We have one sane. Some type of racing game. Let's try it. I should probably plug in my... Uh, Wow, that's screwing up my second screen. Not cool. So the problem with GOG and those games is that they're old. They have a lot of weird quirks. I can't even see any. It minimized everything that I had running on the other screen. So I cannot see anything that's going on. It's using 1080p. Let's at least do a quick race while I've got it running. The Baja Bug. Whoa. Okay. It's 
it's like okay i didn't think i could get a fet <laughs> oh no all right that could potentially be interesting but uh no <laughs> not not today seriously game design is a whole nother thing of what i would like to complain about or game inter game interface design all the think screens they show before you can even get into it messages and crap when you try to leave the weird like placement of things it's just a lot that is very unnecessary in game design shadow warrior classic edition could try that real quick. Guessing this is DOS. Yeah, of course it's DOS. I uh, did the same thing with my Twin Dragon. One Town Destruction. Why does it look so terrible? Screen menu? Screen size? Nope. Well, I don't think I'm going to play this very long, but... Uh, yeah. Looks terrible. Okay. It's dark too. Let's see what else we got. Hmm. Rogue Squadron System Shock. I'm gonna go to Steam. These should work a little bit better. Metal Slug. Could do that real quick. Oh, my ultra got an ultra wide lens. I have an ultra long USB cable. I should say plus plus ultra. Oh, I probably should not connect it first. Um, what am I doing here? Pull up my program related to my controller that I use and then run it or I should say and then plug it in there we go um looking good that's looking looking not too bad either. Okay. Let's try the Metal Slug X. I think I'm going to have to adjust my audio for every single game. All right. Settings. Okay. It's 1080p. Where is it? There we go. Ah, come on, man. So I have to go to full screen first and then do it? totally ignored my alt center okay. 
There we go. Go easy mode. Mission mode? Let's try that. <clears throat> Girl with glasses, my favorite one. I was trying to pick. Feels kind of slow for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on. Ah. And I have to. These. Are, this is one of those games where you have to keep pressing the button to fire. So that's going to get old fast. I mean, if you have a controller that does turbo, definitely be better to do that if you can. Yeah, classic SNK game, I mean, not much to say, really, whoops, I'm not super into playing it with the bubble though. Hey. Hmm. Oops, That's, start menu's not doing anything. Okay. Okay. Okay, indeed. Okay. Yes. Hmm. It's a Ninja Turtle game that I don't know if I want to redo that level. I die on it. Sonic. Attack of the Labyrinth. Tabletop simulator. That'd be good to find some people and play that again. It's pretty fun. Let's play 12.9 hours of tabletop simulator. Duke Nukem 3D. Unreal Tournament. Could do EDF. Do some of that. Change up my category. Earth defense. Coup. So I mentioned in the last stream, I finished a video recently, but it, I'm not quite done. I'm going to do, I, I put it on. YouTube. So that's my main thing. And then I also put it on on my photography bonsai page and Instagram video, which used to be called IGTV. Uh, so those did all that. 
and nice enough this time I didn't use background music so I didn't have to make a version for YouTube and Facebook video otherwise I have to make a special version for Facebook to use a different audio track Let's see, is that good? Looks okay. Checking the audio levels. I'll do normal. Let's lower this thing. Only we, the Spriggan, can complete this mission. The Spriggans. There's an anime called Spriggan. Potentially seen it, but. I don't remember. Use silent modules. Commence night flight. Let's go. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Oh. Huh. It's a tiny spot to be hanging out. We got shotgun and mortars. Okay. I'm starting to remember what I'm doing here. Guns are pretty good. Come on, jump, dude. It's just a certain level of quality that this developer, San I think it's Sandlot, they're in Japan. They've improved a lot, but some of it's always got this little hint of low quality like for example when I do the jumping thing it's not a timer but there's like no indicator when I can use it again so I keep pressing the button and it's just not the get dunked on oh I'm using heavy mortars that's why these are one shots on these frogs. And part of my frustration could be by design because this character is not supposed to be fast. So even when he's walking around, he's like a little slot, slot man. So topics today, I kind of treat this like a presentation more so than a stream. I don't really expect anyone to watch it as I'm doing it. And I'm used to making videos that people don't watch until I, I release them, so streaming is a very different form of video for me. So I don't know where I'm going. Okay. Let's go this way. So I'll try to think of topics that I can talk about while it's running. There we go. Talked about cheese curds. Talked about, uh, it was flipping cold today. What else? I was kind of sort of thinking of all this, I mean, all these things take time and my main goal should be the video stuff. But this is 
It's been kind of interesting, so I've been doing it quite a bit. And, uh... I was thinking about trying to pull out my... Whoa, what is shooting me? Something shooting me. Okay, that's a lot of crap. That is a lot of stuff. I was thinking about pulling out a game that I had had finished in Android. It was a dual stick shooter style game, 2D. I didn't use any type of uh, libraries or anything, just straight Android graphics library. You know, not third party libraries, but Android specific official stuff. So the Android API. And I'm sure. If I tried to go back it on that, I mean, this it needed a lot, but I had a reasonable amount of the engine in there. You could move around, you can switch maps. You have maps. Uh, you can pick up items, shoot things. There were enemies, but they didn't really have AI. I've never attempted to do a, an AI type thing. Man, this is rough. I don't know what happened to the Spriggans. But uh, I was thinking of maybe doing on stream, trying to get it working again. Which just, just getting it running will be a process onto itself. I'm getting dunked on here. Jump! Jump, dude! Crap. But yeah, that would be interesting to look at. Although I might have to like pre-game it a little bit. Because otherwise uh, it could just not work. I could potentially have to uh, Make a new project in whatever. I don't know if Android Studio still exists or what, but it seems like Google is trying to move towards a language called. Uh, sort of with an F. It's Java based, but it's not. It's How different. Are the, other areas looking? the war is getting out of hand, but we are still hanging on. The Can't remember the, what the it was called. Carriers have exceeded everyone's expectation. They are from outer space, after all. It's unlikely they brought submarines with them. Now they need to take time to set up base, since the submarine carriers are causing them trouble. We uh, need to take advantage yeah, of this would, Anyways, that would be potentially interesting. Leave it to us. We will try to weaken their forces. I don't know if I'm gonna make an attempt to turn it into a full game because that would still be a significant time investment. Damn, that dude, dude's legs off. That's crazy. That is nasty. Let's try it on this one. I mean, it might be a way to quickly get rid of him. Can get close. Ah, come on. Let's see if it destroys my health. Yeah. Yeah. One shot, leg. Oh, it's still. I think it's dead. Man, this is pretty brutal. 
I see green dots. I assume that means items. But I'm not seeing actual stuff. Jump, jump, jump. Okay, here's one. And there's one somewhere around here. Uh, it might be under the wrong dude. Oh, shoot. I hope I'm not stuck in here. Shoot. There we go. Besides that, I probably should start making a list. I have been making a list of ideas to talk about, but haven't looked at it lately. So it makes it pretty much not useful for the moment. Here we go. I said I had released the latest video on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram as a normal video, but I need to take that, cut it down, and make a video that's a minute or less. So I've been also releasing short versions and then linking it when I can. Yeah, one shot. It's still oh man this is pretty graphic three shots so you survived newbie it's an honor to fight alongside the spring pretty gruesome make the one minute versions of videos And then put it on uh, YouTube Shorts. Link the main video. Also put it on Instagram Reels. And uh, TikTok. Those are the platforms I use at the moment. I don't know what else is out there, but... Oh, and sometimes I make a really Amazon... It's larger than a building. Creator Hub video, oh, but that's that. very so product specific Earth. type of video specific. And this current video that I just did is I don't think it's a good fit for that platform. The enemy's counter air system is perfect. We should attack from the ground. We have to take out those drones before oh, we can attack cool. the base. Attack the drones! Wow, that's crazy. Powered exoskeletons, move out. Cover the infantry. Fencers, move in. We'll cover them. Move in with our shields. Block the artillery fire. The enemy outpost is protected by anti-air artillery. We can only approach them from the ground. This is nuts. Head toward the alien outpost. This is G2. We're being attacked by the cannons. No kidding, dude. Currently, there are five alien bases around the world. Each of them was dropped from the sky. Getting some help. I can't believe they can deploy entire bases. Those aliens certainly came prepared. We 
which means areas surrounding the base are suppressed. We are here to protect the city, but I didn't expect this site. Attack the base! Look out for enemies' counterattack. Attacking the base is not working! Amazing. Your wound attack on the base was ineffective! I won't let you die! The airstrike didn't yeah, seem this to looks work cool. <laughs> Switch to attack mode! Oh, man. There are more drones than expected. Got it. That's no good if the situation. I knew it wouldn't be a cakewalk. Our objective is to collect intel. I know. But we can't continue the mission anymore. Wow, that looks cool. The large cannons. These are plasma cannons. Can't believe they have that kind of technology. Plasma is not a very impressive technology. Superheated gas. Drones are dispatched from the base. Now, if it were something more exotic. If the drones attack us right now, we'll get wiped out. Artillery fire is too strong. Is it now? We can't take it anymore. Ouch. I don't even know what hit me. What the hell is that? What's the health pack? Something's hitting me. This is C4. Confirm that the giant cannons have been initiated. Run! It's too dangerous here! Oh, I can't destroy these. We can't continue like this. Retreat! What the hell is... Retreat! Hurry! Drones are it's, coming again! Yeah, it's blown up. Drones chase us. The city will suffer heavy casualties. Shoot down the drone. Well, busy. Whoa. Don't let those drones spread out. Get up, Shoot dude. Shoot down the drones as you fall back. Ah, crap. I think it's intentional that they're trying to push me off. Get some health and then try it again. Is shooting me. Ouch. Oh, that really hurt. If we don't 
Don't shoot down all of the drones. They will cause a lot of damage. Shoot down all drones. That's what I'm doing, man. Dang. Flipping drones that are doing it. Potentially ran ramming me. There are some drones remaining. Shoot them down. That's what I'm doing, man. I'm also trying to look for health though. It's probably some way over there. Yeah. Heck is doing that. Come on. Strafing so that they hopefully don't hit me. I probably don't even need to do this. I might as well pick up these weapons while I'm at it. There we go. They'll be dominating the ground as long as the base exists. We've been outplayed. A large number of monsters confirmed. Stay alert. Everyone stay Switch alert. To first mode. Yes, yes sir. sir. Let's start the fight. Oh, oh, inside it. Huh? We'll destroy them. Destroy the pylons! Oh, Let's go! Right? Yes, 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 sir! Pylons right. confirmed! Enemies detected. Really close. Right? The fight is starting. Oh, oh, right? 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 Monsters! Send oh, my sensor right? output. Right? Yes, yes, sir! sir. Don't do Monsters right? are coming right? out from the pylons! Right? Use your own judgment to change to flying combat. Dang, that took a hit from a flipping heavy mortar. Aliens are protecting the pylons. And the tree did. Ah. Totally missed. Confirm the target enemy. Yes, sir. 
with this combination of the shotguns plus the super damage heavy uh, what do they call heavy mortars The reason I was standing there was just to let the thing reload. Will be called teleportation anchors. Their weak spot is the glowing device on the top. If we only attack the top part, we can destroy them with infantry firearms. That outfit. Come on. So you got the dude in his flipping fully clothed. And you have this. I'm sure their excuse will be you need to be in lightweight. So you gotta wear panties. the range. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. One hit nice. Too low. Nice. A lot of it depends on where he hit it. If this was a sci-fi movie, the aliens would be afraid of water. It's still possible. Once it rains, they'll all drop dead. Yeah, right. Direct hit. Stop after this mission. Also, don't have a ton to talk about today. 
these temples I can think of. Actually related to the whole making videos and everything else. Pretty much always been interested in making things. From Lego, you know, constructing, building Legos when I was a kid. Still have some of them. Uh, taking stuff apart, putting it back together might not work afterwards, but... <laughs> or, usually when I had taken things apart, it was already broken. Some electronic stuff. Uh, woodworking. With my woodworking stuff, there was a time period where I set up a basement area. Not had some hand tools, power hand tools, but uh, made a triangle table to fit in a corner. Still have that. Made uh, used a computer desk. And then made, not you say computer case, and then made a desk with the case in it. And the case acted as the surface. You know, kind of like how servers have uh, racks, but not that involved. So basically, a case, wood sides, rollers, and like a bottom piece to keep it structurally sound. So it wasn't really like a desk you would use what I remember. Actually, the, the wood that came from that, I, uh, it made a Dance Dance Revolution step pad, but it wasn't a pad, it was like a legitimate metal wood and electronics. So I had the wood base, five wood. And like laminate, laminated wood. And then the. It's a nine grid. Dance Dance Revolution has a nine grid square. And it's uh, four. One, two, three, four, six. Yeah. Four of the squares are buttons, basically, with the arrow pointing out. And then the other squares are basically just metal covered wood in my case. So I had sheet metal that I, I didn't buy the right type. So the type that I bought was potentially it could rust, but I, cover, I covered it. So I ended up not having an issue with that at least as long as I had it. Um, and then got plexiglass and these special square brackets that people who were doing similar things had suggested trying to find. So for each each square that had a button, like a foot button, you would use four of these metal brackets around the edges to keep the plexiglass in the right position. And then on the so it's, it's a multi-layer thing. You've got the bottom layer of wood, and then you have the second layer where it's either a button or a piece of wood plus the metal sheet cover over it. Um, so each button had the plexiglass, and then on the inside you had some wood structure, but then the, it was an open cavity where you would have your switches. Now that was difficult to figure out long-lasting safe switches. My first idea was trying to use reed switches with magnets, but that was stupid because reed switches are glass. That didn't... When I tested it, it didn't work anyways, as I was hoping. So I ended up going with these... Uh, I'm not sure what they were used for. But uh, it was like these plastic things with two screws in each one where you could connect wires to it. But then I flipped it around 
and then I had copper attached to the plexiglass. And you know, when you touch, you form a, a pathway for the electricity to go. And then you get your button press. And then I hooked all that up to a, a standard USB controller that I took apart. It worked pretty well. I never. I mean, I had to adjust it a little bit, and where the switches were is basically those plastic plus metal things, and then I had really dense foam to keep the plexiglass, you know, moving. I do have a few photos of it. I could probably try to find. But I eventually took that apart because it was just so big. Crap. And I made that computer table desk thing out of it, out of most of it. At least the main piece. And I eventually took that apart too. But uh, let's see what other. I mean, I make other smaller things too. With Woodworking, whatever. Uh, I didn't have a ton of, like, really. I had a hand saw, you know, a circular saw that I would attach to a jig type thing. And a router. I still have the router. Uh, jigsaw. What else? But it didn't have a table saw or anything like that. Gotta get those weapons. Also, I could use some health right now. Jump, dude, jump, 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 jump. Working is pretty fun when you, especially when you have a good setup for it, which I kind of tried to make something, but it was cramped and it was a bad idea in the long run because wood and being down there and stuff was producing a lot of moisture and that was just not good in the, the type of basement it was. So I was getting some mold things and I, I had to quit doing that. Could have, that could have uh, partly caused some of my issues that I had with everything, my physical issues. But uh, still, it was good practice and fun making stuff at the time. Um, draw. I, I have occasionally tried to do drawing. A lot of graphic design things, websites. Through the years, definitely a lot of websites. I wouldn't call myself an artist, really. Like a traditional drawing art and everything. I'm not especially good at that. Of course, anything like that would come with a lot of practice and effort. I just haven't put that type of effort into it. But I've definitely done a lot of designs and Photoshop for a long time. Uh, program called Inkscape. Use a bit here and there for the vector stuff. Three D modeling. There was a point, a point in time where I was doing some three D modeling stuff. Uh, I had mentioned in the past, it was er really early on, sometime in high school, I was working on a real-time strategy game project 
basically like a, my first serious-ish programming thing with a few guys that I didn't actually know, but I knew online. And I was doing the programming, a lot of the programming, but I was also uh, doing 3D modeling and making like units for the game and then rendering frames and animation and uh, you know how a, your unit moves around the map. It has different positions. It has different uh, animations for like firing a weapon or whatever. Oh, it would help if I destroy these things. What am I doing? That's why it's... Come on. Jeez. Holy crap. Well, I guess that was good for me. Since the alien invasion, the entire world has been engulfed in flames. Though there are cases of successful killings of monsters, they have all resulted in heavy casualties. The economy has taken its toll as well. More businesses are shutting down, which leads to lower employment rate. There has not been a concrete show oh, that fights unemployment. Crap, oh, crap. Okay, this needs to... Missed it. Ah. Okay, I just killed myself. Ah. All right. I think I'm done. It's a good test with the crazy wide angle. 10 millimeter, 16 millimeter equivalent. Come on. Yes. All right. Switch this. There we go. Yeah, interesting look. I could see using this in the future. I'm going to have to look at the resulting footage and see what it looks like. Really? I just have a preview. But I think it looks okay for the moment. Yeah. Anyways, I'll see you around.